Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. <laughs> Several years ago I reviewed this great super super compact uh, Liberty One bow which looks like it's a youth bow or a kid's bow which isn't the case. This is a serious hunting bow. It has 70 pounds of a draw weight in this case. Actually you can get it in different strengths and this one has 29.35 inches of a draw. So this is a serious bow. It's just almost riserless. That's why it's so compact. My review was pretty glowing because I still love this bow. Even though I had it for many years, I didn't have to do anything to stick it out and shoot it again. Everything was just great. So I love this bow because it's so compact and so powerful. And for a long time it was without any competition. But that changed because then Gearhead Archery brought out the T18, which is also a very compact bow. So this is the T18. As you see, it looks beautiful and you can get it in all different kinds of materials and colors. And it is almost the same size, even though it does have a riser. But then, of course, China picked it up and brought out a competitor as well. And I just recently got one of those. So this is the model from China. It is a little less powerful. It only has like 50 pounds, but of course, it's a lot cheaper. So I thought, let's do a review. Now, just for the record, I paid full price for all three bows. This means this is by no means a sponsored video, so it's completely honest, I guarantee. So we will start with the Liberty One. Let me show you its features. The Liberty One, I think, is an ingenious design. As you can see, it almost has no riser. And why should it? I mean, it's, uh, it's designed to be sitting in some kind of a tree stand waiting for the game to arrive. Uh, and therefore you want it very compact. But by ingenious design, this, of course, is a full power, full draw length bow. I have to say you have to shoot it with a release because otherwise the angle here would be way too steep when fully drawn and therefore but that's not a problem really. Um, and um, also uh, you have to keep in mind that when you buy a powerful professional bow then it will come naked. This means you have to attach everything. You have to attach an arrow uh, rest, you have to attach a sight, you probably have to attach the uh, peep sight on the other side. Even the D-loop usually is not mounted. And therefore, you always have to make sure if you want the bow to be fully loaded, make sure that it's described that way. So next in line is the Gearhead Archery T18. And if we put two of them together, ah, okay. And if we put the two of them together, you can see that the dimensions are almost exactly the same. The total length of the T18 is a little shorter than the one of the Liberty. But then again, it's also a little bit uh, more deep. So I would say these are very comparable in size. They're small bows anyway. Since the T18 still has a riser, actually the longest riser in the test field today, um, it has a rather short draw. So it doesn't go all the way up to the like 29 inches that the Liberty One has. And so that you can still draw this to anchor point, actually you need a release with a longer shaft so that you have the uh, total, put, so that you have the final end position. It's also a very powerful bow. I think it is the 70 pound version. And the draw actually feels harder than the draw of the Liberty one. And of course all these bows have a comfortable uh, let off. Shoots great. So the next one in our little test field is the Chinese triangle bow. It's sold under different brand names as usual. You can get this on Amazon, you can get this on Alibaba or AliExpress. And therefore there's many ways to get it and it starts around two hundred dollars that's about the cheapest thing for the naked bow and you can also sometimes buy it fully loaded and if you compare the dimensions with the liberty one it clearly is bigger uh, i'm not sure if you can really see this but it is a lot a lot deeper mostly and i'm not so sure if that makes a huge difference because they're still very compact bows uh, and uh, but it is the biggest in the test field and I had to attach my own air rest. I didn't have any one that fit. So therefore I simply made a little adapter piece for this one here. Sights, um, it comes with the holder. It was fairly easy to just mount a standard sight. That's not the big deal. It, it does come with the peep sights installed. So that's a plus. Also the D-loop is uh, installed. You just need to put on the air rest and the sight. So let's first talk about overall design and workmanship. The Liberty One is really light. It's the lightest in the test field. You can get it for left and right handers. And the only difference, I think, is the angle of the handle here, which I really like that it's canted that way very much because it means that you don't need any arm protection. Uh, it never happens that the string 
touches your arm. So I think that's very clever. You could get this in very light draw weights, like from 40 or 50 pounds onwards, all the way to the 70 pound bundle that I have. The T18 is fantastic workmanship. I think it's the most professionally machined bow that I've ever seen. Um, look at this kind of mesh structure here in the aluminum. I think you can also get this in carbon fiber. Uh, everything on this here is top-notch manufacturing quality. It feels great in the hand. Like the little armored uh, throwing arms here, everything is just perfect. It's, uh, it's just a joy to look at this thing and to hold it. And it's truly ambidextrous. This means that you can really hold it either with your left or your right hand. And it's the only one in the test field that comes with a string stopper, which makes it a lot more silent and also less dangerous to hit your arm. So, fantastic workmanship. The only thing that I don't really like is that it has such a short draw, uh, so you need this long release. And that is simply because of the longer riser. It's probably better for accuracy, I don't know. The Chinese triangle bow actually looks pretty cool. Even the, even the handle here, the grip looks nice, but it isn't really nice to hold because it's, first of all it's very slim. So it really you know, draws itself into your hand. And then it's, it looks comfortable, but it really isn't. The webbing between my index finger and my thumb is actually uh, squeezed so hard that I'm losing feeling here in my thumb. So this is really something that they could have done a lot better. It's also clearly made for Chinese hands. Now, if I hold this thing, you see, it's not comfortable at all for my hands. Uh, yeah. It is, of course, uh, ambidextrous. This means you can hold it from either way. The riser actually is made from plastics, which is the only one in the, in the test field. The throwing arms look like carbon fiber, but I have the suspicion that it's really just glass fiber or fiberglass. And I, my suspicion is that these are only decoration, because you can also get this in a camouflage version. But other than that, I think it appears that this is well made and also not awful to look at. Of course, one of the advantages of these bows is that they th shoot right through the middle. Therefore, you have very little archer's paradox, just a little bit. But, of course, they're very symmetrical bows, they are. Um, everything is in the middle. The arrow rest, uh, the sides, everything is just centered. And uh, I like that. It's kind of a pleasing, comfortable feeling. Now, what I have to say about this bow is that the geometrics are just not perfect, because if you look closely, you can see that the arrow actually is high. It's not in the center between the two arms. And this means also this distance is shorter than this distance. So the geometry is actually kind of shifted upwards, which is probably not very good for accuracy, because actually it might give the arrow some kind of drag. But I have to say that so far it was shooting pretty accurate. So maybe they have done something in the design, maybe maybe have a difference in draw strength from the upper and the lower limbs because it's shooting well for me so far. Now the draw is actually pretty light since this is only 50 pounds so it's 20 pounds lighter than the other bows which is good because the handle is so uncomfortable that I don't think I could really do it if there will be full 70 pounds. Other than that there's no, it's like a piece of cake to draw this out very easy. So shooting it of course works much like shooting with the other bows. You aim through the peep sights and then you shoot. <laughs> now we're coming to the speed test and until very recently I would have shown you this whole thing on this crony, this chronograph here, which of course is using light, therefore it is very sensitive and maybe on a good day like one out of every three test shots would be measured by this. I even installed small little lights here so it's more consistent, uh, but of course you can only use this outdoors and uh, or you need special lighting for it. Okay, but these days are over because there's a new product on the market. This here, yes, we're replacing this thing with just this here. <laughs> it's an FX Air Guns product and it's actually a chronograph that's using radar or radar instead of light. Therefore, you can even use this in the dark if you want to, if you can aim. <laughs> but in any case, um, this is ingenious because it picks up uh, like slow arrows, but it also picks up high speed air gun pellets. I think it goes up until about 1500 feet per second, so it's fairly fast. And um, this will hit the market in a few months, I think. And I believe that if you're into shooting, then you need to get one of these, because this way you can test your equipment easily without all the you know, stuff that you have to go through using one of these. 
so you simply put it anywhere and you have like a window like that where you can shoot through and then we'll pick up the shot so it's very very easy to operate and the result will immediately be shown right on your cell phone because it comes with apps for iPhone and Android and uh, therefore if you can even punch in all the projectile weights and so on this means that it could also give you like foot pounds or joules you don't have to use a calculator for this this is great stuff and the connection is Bluetooth so you don't need to lock into some kind of Wi-Fi or something it directly connects itself to the chronograph via Bluetooth super product so we are starting with the triangle bow from China Okay, that's 69 meters per second, not so bad. Next we're shooting the Liberty one because we can use the same release. Whoa, <laughs> 89 meters per second. Now that's a different issue, for sure. And last not least, the Gearhead Archery T18. And we are using the longer release for that. <coughs> 82 meters per second. That's pretty close. These are rather short arrows, um, I shortened them just to the right length and they only weigh 21 grams. So these are pretty lightweight arrows because I wanted to find out the maximum arrow speed that we can get. Now in order to see how well the bows really shoot, we're now gonna do some 1500 frames per second high speed recordings. Now, while the bow is kind of interesting and it's uh, easy to shoot and draw weight is acceptable, the only thing that's really bad is the grips. This is really bad. It's, it's made for a Chinese hand and it's way too slim, so even someone with small hands would not find it comfortable to shoot. Therefore, let's remove it. We can take it out just simply by releasing two screws here and make our own. It's much more fat and angled. So we started with some wood and of course plywood and started to shape it and this is the result. <laughs> As you can see, very significant difference in size, specifically in thickness. While this one is cutting into the hand, it's really uncomfortable, this one is entirely different. It's really nice and solid in the hand and as you can also see, it is angled. This means that just like I would later on shoot it in the bow, I would shoot it like this so that it's, it's comfortable this way and not straight. Of course, it's less ambidextrous now. And this is how it now looks mounted. It is so much nicer. Yeah, that is now easy in the hand. What a difference it makes. <laughs> See, it's kind of perfect. Time for a conclusion. We're starting with the Liberty One. The Liberty One is the oldest design, but I think it's still the best one. It is the performance winner. Uh, it is the weight winner. While it is the most expensive in the field, this is still my recommendation. It's just a super bow and I think it's a genius invention. So I really recommend this bow. So second in the field is the Gearhead Archery T18. And to me, this is the manufacturing quality winner. Uh, and also overall looks. I mean, this is just, this, the quality is so superb. It's, it's not that slower than the Liberty one, so it's pretty close. It's also $100 less expensive. And for that, you get a great bow.
it's amazing. Last not least, the Chinese knockoff. <laughs> it's not really a knockoff. You see, it's an independent design, really. I mean, it's the same concept is that it is small, but that's about the end of it. Uh, it is uh, a fine bow, although, of course, it, it lacks behind in performance, draw weight, all this, and also workmanship, because it's just plastic and so on. But for the price, it's a major steal. So this clearly is the price winner. And as you see, it can be modified fairly easily to make it even better. So I hope you like this, because that's it for today. Whoa! You know what just happened? This arrow was a little bit too short. Wow, that's dangerous. Look at that. It jammed itself into here. <laughs> so, once again, <laughs> I hope you like this because that's it for today. <laughs> Thanks and bye-bye.